You've lived your whole life in a world that is run by vampires and demons. What do you do when you realize the job to save a daughter from certain death isn't worth it? You're going to have to kill every single creepy crawly nasty demon monster that stands in your way, and maybe even humans. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do and how to beat the vampire demons in Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust. This man is going to regret being a vampire hunter. This guy is a Dampier, a half human half vampire hybrid. Basically blade but less cool. He gets a warm welcome as he meets with this guy and this other dude who won't even look at him, and they offer him his next bounty. This guy's sister, Charlotte, has just been kidnapped by a powerful vampire lord, and eyewitness accounts say that they know who's responsible. The man tells the Dampier, but we'll call him D, that they want him to bring her back alive before she suffers a fate that is in every single vampire movie, turning into a vampire. Desperate, the man tells D that he's hired other vampire hunters to do the job as well. Whoever can bring Charlotte back safe first, will win the enormous bounty, and D accepts the challenge. Later, he comes across another group of vampire hunters hired to find Charlotte, but their ride is broken. Not caring whatsoever, he rides off to find his target, but happens to get followed by one of the hunters, this blonde girl. The next day, he finally arrives at the noble's hideout. Using his wits, he manages to get past the building's security and places his hand on the wall, sensing that two people are inside, and he tries to track their movements just as the sun goes down. But he gets interrupted by the blonde bounty hunter, Hunter from earlier because she shows up and charges in guns blazing and totally screws up his element of surprise. The vampire lord's carriage races off and she fires her rocket launcher but the vampire lord easily deflects it and sends shrapnel right back at her. On the run, the vampire lord's carriage goes through this tunnel just as D catches up with them and the two get into a showdown. The vampire lord introduces himself as my year Link, a vampire known for not harming humans. The two fight on top of the carriage and D lands a strike on Lord Myer, but out of nowhere, D gets distracted as he hears Charlotte call out from below to Mayer out of concern, causing D to fall off of the carriage and watches Charlotte slips away. Okay, I'm going to flip my shit, and it's not for what you think. Yes, I can't be the only one who was stunned to have the girl we're trying to save call out to her abductor, but y'all are missing the point. Why don't you take out the ride? The vampire lord clearly needs this carriage to be able to travel in daylight. If he didn't need it, why would he just take the girl and fly off to wherever he needs to get to? If I was Mr. D, I'm not fighting to kill the vampire lord yet. My target is in him. It's the girl. I'm going to do what I have to to get the vampire guy away from the horses, but once I can get to them, I'm going to dice them up and make him into a nice Nice bowl of Basashi. The carriage will then crash and the vampire lord will be stuck and I will have the advantage. Could the girl die in the crash? Sure, but if she doesn't, a few broken bones means I can still bring her home to daddy and get my money. D thinks something fishy is going on with Charlotte and my heir, but his wrinkle face of a left hand thinks that she's just under his hypnotic spell. Returning to get his horse, he sees the blonde lady from earlier badly injured. He decides to heal her up, telling her that her bounty hunter squad will soon reach her, and he leaves. Later that night, D reaches a fort known to house terrifying monsters of all kinds known as the Barbaroids, a group of mercenary bodyguards. D knows that these guys are hiding Charlotte and Mayer, who is now likely resting after his intense battle, and is vulnerable. He demands that they hand over the girl, but the Barbaroid leader tells him that they've been serving the vampire lords for centuries. They refuse to cooperate and simply tell D that entering their fort has already sealed his fate. Knowing he's outmatched, D thinks fast and tells them that ganging up on him is unfair and will ruin the reputation of the guild throughout the land. Instead, he suggests that they should match their best fighters against him him in a slightly more fair battle to the death. Nearby blonde hair girl squad has been tracking him, and they prepare to poach the bounty for themselves, using their special weapon, this all-powerful psychic. These three bodyguards offer to fight D, but that's when everyone sees a strange bright object approaching them, and it's coming fast. Devastating beams of light shoot out from the psychic, and he slaughters dozens of monsters using his powers. Okay, I'm now a bounty hunter who's going to make a lot of money, and I mean a lot, if I get my target back to her father alive, but I'm only human. I'm not Japan's version of Blade over here. I have to be more careful. This isn't Twilight. I can't just follow my heart, or in this case, my greed, and rush in to take my prize. There's only a handful of us, and we're parked just outside of a fortress filled with monsters. The guy they sent in, the psychic, he's been sick since birth, and has been blessed with the ability to project a psychic image of himself that can interact with the real world, and affords him the ability to fight and shoot blasts of mystical energy from all parts of his psychic form. But every time he uses this power, he uses up his life force each time. But, uh, how about we go with my plan? My plan is to not send 
my ace in the hole ghosty guy over here until we really need him, since we would only have him for a limited amount of time to begin with. What they should have done was just to find a spot that they liked outside of the fortress near the exit road that Lord Myer's carriage would have had to go through in order to leave the fortress, because it's clear that this fortress is not their final destination, which means that these guys could have just waited right outside and hit them when they were on their way out. Away from the majority of monsters, this move would have allowed Blonde Girl's team to hit the enemy carriage hard and fast and also taking into account Ghosty's limited use of his powers, while still allowing them to successfully rescue Charlotte, or at least increase their odds of pulling it off, because this group has the gear and the skills, but what they don't have is the manpower to basically blitzkrieg an entire fortress, which is what they just did. This move is way too risky and is now more than likely going to cost them. The psychic Ghosty kills dozens of monsters in seconds, and it's utter chaos. The Barbaroid leader demands his best hunters, these three, to escape with Charlotte and Mayer immediately, but Ghosty catches on and heads straight for the carriage, and runs into D. The Dampier swiftly takes out Ghosty's psychic projection, causing its human host to go into a seizure. D charges after the evil bounty hunters, but then he runs into this guy's magic trap, imprisoning him instantly. Meanwhile, Blonde Girl's team continues to tell the carriage throughout the night, and one of the idiots fires a rocket at the carriage. In response, this green hair girl attacks them and goes under their carriage and absorbs through the floor of their vehicle, and sends terrifying spikes up through the floor and nearly kills everyone on board and instantly disables their vehicle. Blonde Hair Girl's gang then gets stranded in the desert, with nowhere to escape to. Green Hair Girl's partner tells her that he's going to stay behind and finish the job, and merges into the shadows and he prepares to brutally slaughter everyone here. Okay, this is horrifying, because again, we're dealing with some insane mystical shit that makes absolutely no sense, aka standard anime things. But this is a case where this group's bravery and headstrong attitude could bleed into arrogance if they're not careful. Yet again, they're up against a mystical creature and have no way to escape due to their broken down vehicle. Good job, guys. If I'm one of the bounty hunters and one of my guys told me that there's another one out there, we have to be careful. Logically, we have to assume that a vampire would never employ other vampires as bodyguards due to the very nature of their species being unable to tolerate the sun during the day, limiting their travel by default. This means that it's almost guaranteed that these guys are not up against more vampires, but something else entirely. And that also means the game has changed. And for whatever reason, the thing we're up against hasn't killed us yet, which is actually a good thing. It makes me think that this creature will try to take its time, toying with us before it brutally kills us all, choosing to horrify its victim before killing them. But it's because of this we can use it to our advantage. My group is wide out in the open, and I can see from all directions that the only thing that's obstructing my view are these massive oil rigs. It's unlikely that whatever is hunting us down is on the rig farthest away from me, meaning it's probably hiding somewhere on the rig closest to me. The group should split up and surround the oil rig from all angles, with Blonde Chick taking point and sitting on top of my dystopian Humvee thing. She'll grab a hold of her rocket launcher and aim it at the rig. Headbang Guy will cover the left side of it, while Redhead Guy take the other side, allowing us to cover almost every side of the oil rig structure. This will allow us to close in on the monster, and will allow Blonde Girl to scare the monster into revealing his location by firing a rocket at the structure, and by doing this, the creature will likely be forced into switching positions on the oil rig, coming out of hiding in the process, and this will allow the gang, now situated on all sides, to better take out this bastard once and for all. Using the shadows as his ally, the demon charges at Blonde Hair Girl's group, but suddenly, he senses that D has finally broken out of his magic prison. He panics, knowing that it won't be long before the world's greatest bounty hunter reaches him, picks up the pace, and moves in quickly for the kill. But Headband Guy sees this and finally catches on to his moves, and he comes up with a plan on the fly, and his team sprints into action, and manages to finally kill him where he stands. And the team thinks that now they're their shit, but their luck will run out sooner than they think. They work on fixing up their broken down vehicle, and decide to stop at a nearby town to resupply, but they notice D in the distance. He's finally caught up with them. Exhausted, D's wrinkled face of a left hand warns him that unless he gets out of the sun soon, he will soon die from sun sickness. But D doesn't listen and powers through with his mission. Afraid of D stealing their bounty, Blonde Girl comes up with a plan to slow him down, and goes into the the town's bar and informs the sheriff that a terrifying vampire hunter is nearby and that they must stop him before he causes trouble. Meanwhile, Dee finally reaches the town's stable and tries to buy a new horse from this old fossil, but he gets interrupted by Chisel Chin Sheriff, who shows up and tells him that his kind is forbidden in this town. Dee tries to reason with the sheriff, but he doesn't listen. Starting to think he's out of options, he gets ready to steal the horse. But finally, his happy vampy luck finally kicks in. This old man then reveals a big kahuna of a big fatty right in front of the sheriff's face. The old man tells Dee that he owes him one, that this old man was actually one of the kids that he saved decades ago, and tells him to get the hell out of Dodge with his new ride. Later, the noble vampire Mayer tells the evil bounty hunters to stop at this river, knowing that Charlotte soon won't be able to see the sun ever again. He tells his bodyguards to back off and let her enjoy her day in the sun one last time. Getting some fresh air, Charlotte heads down to the far side of the lake just as her eyes fill with dread, seeing Dee standing
standing right across from her. He tells her to come with him, but she refuses. Dee questions what's really going on, and Charlotte reveals the horrifying truth. She's in love with a vampire. Lord Maier himself. Dee's poker face is shocked, but he tells her that her family has paid him to bring her back to them. But she says that she'll die before she leaves, and that she wants to become a vampire, so he tells her that if she does, he's also been paid to kill her the moment she turns into a terrifying vampire. Because becoming one of them means you're already dead. So she plays hard to get, and then Blonde Girl finally shows up, trying to claim the bounty for herself. She grabs Charlotte and tries to leave with her, threatening Dee to back off. But suddenly, Green Hair Girl swipes Blonde Girl from above, just just as Bicep Stud comes down to steal Charlotte, Dee wastes no time and uses his super speed to catch up with them in the forest. But that's when he realizes that something is not right. He feels weak and, and dizzy. He collapses on the floor, and his wrinkle faced left hand tells him what he fears most. He now has sun sickness. Okay, this is some bullcrap, because our sexy, tall, dark, and handsome Edward Cullen wannabe has now royally screwed up. While a dampier can outlast regular vampires in sunlight, being able to withstand the sun for up to six months before catching any sort of sun sickness. Our main hero here, he can stay out of the sun for up to five years before succumbing to the sunlight sickness. Truly main hero stuff. But the terrifying thing about this sickness is that it can happen without warning. Even Dee's left hand can't detect when this will happen exactly. But when it does, it means the dampiers are basically unable to move or defend themselves, with the cure being that they need to bury themselves in the ground in order to rest, leaving them vulnerable as hell. Dee thinks fast on how to <laughs> not die and runs into a patch of grass to hide nearby. Wrinkle Face tells them that if he doesn't bury himself within the next few minutes, he'll be dead. He summons up his energy for one final move. Meanwhile, Green Haired Lady continues to search the area for him, but that's when he surprises her and strikes her down, chopping off her head. Barely conscious, Dee desperately tries to dig a hole into the ground to crawl into, and Blonde Lady finally spots him. She decides to be nice and give him a helping hand, and properly digs Dee a proper hole for him to sleep in, saying that now that she saved his life, this makes them even. But oh, lo and behold, it's raining outside, so the two decide to do a typical anime thing and wait out a passing storm. While Dee rests, she discusses her non-important character backstory about how vampires killed her family and blah 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 and how she wants revenge. She tells Dee that this is a lonely job but that no one will show up to her funeral when her time comes. So she makes a pact with the non-caring Dee that if either one of them dies, the other one will show up to their funeral with flowers. The next day, Blonde Lady heads back to join up with her group, while Dee suits up and heads back out to find Charlotte. Meanwhile, Blonde Lady's group continues to track down the noble's location, but they soon realize exactly where Mayer and Charlotte are headed to. The one place that nobody will be able to catch them. The Castle of Chaithi, an ancient castle home to the vampire lord Carmilla, known as the Bloody Countess. Her greed for blood was so strong that even the vampire king of the time killed her because of her crimes. The bounty hunters have one last shot to stop Mayer before he crosses this long bridge into safety. They notify blonde haired girl on the comms that the team is about to intercept the carriage. They blow up part of the bridge and stop the carriage dead in its tracks. With only one bodyguard and the sun still shining, they think they have the noble vampire lord cornered. But that was their biggest mistake. Redhead Guy goes to rescue Charlotte as Werewolf Stud uses his powers to locate the rest of the bombs, hidden under the bridge. In the process of escaping, he gets shot by Headband Guy, and he falls off the bridge. Then Lord Maier steps out into the sun, burning alive in front of everyone, and he demands that the humans give back his Charlotte. And they make fun of him, and prepare to slaughter him and gut him like a pig. But that's when out of nowhere, Charlotte runs to the Vampire Lord and hugs him, stating that she'd rather die than be without him. But that's when Werewolf Wolf Stud shows up again and strikes down Red Haired Guy, killing him instantly. Panicking, Headbang Guy tries to detonate the bombs which he thinks are still under the bridge, and jumps down into the water just as everything around him blows up, barely surviving the event himself. Lucky lucky. All the while as Blonde Haired Girl helplessly watches everything unfold in the distance, and she races over to help her probably dead crew. Okay, this is crazy, because these guys could not have done this rescue mission any more poorly, and it's clear that they rushed the plan without thinking about it, which is obvious because they didn't have a lot of time, but they had more options that they could have gone with, guys. Let me explain. One, trying to manage rescuing Charlotte while watching out for a vampire and a werewolf means that they're outnumbered and overpowered to begin with. And well, yes, it does look like this is their best chance to attack before they cross the bridge. They should have resisted acting impulsively and have taken their chance with trying to intercept the carriage at a little bit later point, allowing blonde hair girl to meet up back with them. That, at the very least, would have allowed one more person to watch the werewolf, one person to watch the vampire, and one person to focus on rescuing Charlotte. 
Scarlet. These people are human after all, so watching a werewolf falling off the bridge and thinking it's dead is probably not a good plan to survive. Headbang Guy is a seasoned bounty hunter. He knows these creatures. He underestimated his opponent and paid the price for it. Or well, I should say, Redhead Guy did. Sorry, Redhead Guy. He should have assumed that due to the werewolf's physiology, him being stronger than a human means that him falling from a height that a human could survive means that it's very likely that Werewolf Guy was not dead. Charlotte and a now kettle-chipped baked Meyer continue to make their way to the ancient castle. Werewolf Stud senses that D is nearby and stays behind to fight him, basically sacrificing his life for no reason really whatsoever, because D easily takes him out and moves on to go save Charlotte. Later that night, Meyer and Charlotte reach the castle and are greeted by the most terrifying spirit in the world, the legendary Countess Carmilla. She tells them that she's willing to help them out and reveals to them an ancient rocket ship used by vampires thousands of years ago. During the good old days, the vampires would use them to get from one one castle to another. She tells them that this vampy spaceship will take them to an abandoned city where they'll be safe. And totally not spooky foreshadowing, Carmilla tells them that she made rooms for them to get ready for their long voyage. They head to a room where Charlotte tries to convince Meyer to bite her and turn her into a vampire already because she's ready for eternity. He wants to, but he resists, telling her that it's a curse that bears a heavy weight, and the two agree to talk about it a little more later. Sensing something is wrong, he tells her to stay in the room while he goes to handle some unfair finished business. He follows his senses right to D, but that's when D reveals Charlotte right next to him, stating that she's choosing to leave Mayer. Stunned, Mayer can do nothing but stand there, slicing Mayer right in half but all of a sudden D disappears, revealing that it's all an illusion. Meanwhile, back in Charlotte's room, she too begins seeing strange visions, and the real D enters the castle, knowing that Charlotte is nearby. He follows the clues and walks right into a mental trap, hallucinating about his mother and his terrifying past. Just outside, Blonde Girl's crew finally arrives and finally do the right thing by Ghosty and tell him to sit this one out. So Blonde Lady and Headband Guy split up to go find Charlotte. No, no, no. These idiots want to head in on their own? They even have the nerve to split up after everything they've been through. And by now, they found out that their target, Charlotte, does not want to be saved and is unwilling to cooperate with them. Because killing a bounty and rescuing one and bringing it back home alive are two very different jobs entirely. And this is a point they need to consider. That aside from her resistance, they're up against a ruthless and cruel vampire noble. And out of her 5,000 years of life, she caused a lot of pain and misery to the human population. If I was them, I'd swallow my ego and use all the help I could get and would go and find their only ally in this castle full of evil spirits and vampires, D himself, because he will be their best bet in keeping the humans alive long enough to find Charlotte, possibly even waiting until D kills Meyer and stops Charlotte from being a threat. This will allow them to open up three possibilities. One, they can swipe Charlotte and get the hell out of Dodge while D handles Meyer and Carmilla. Wait until D kills both vampires and then try to kill him too, that's a less likely option to succeed, but if they do pull it off, they would get 100% of the bounty for themselves. Or option three, wait until D kills both vampires, help him out as much as we can, and agree to split the bounty 50-50 like gentlemen. Blonde Lady and Headband Guy begin to have spooky visions of their own, and Headband Guy sees visions of his dead comrades, and he too finally kicks the bucket, while Blonde Hair Girl sees her past worthless self. Dee bumps into the blonde girl and saves her from the illusion, saying that this is the work of the spirit of the castle, the evil Countess Carmilla. Headband Guy bursts into the room and takes Blonde Hair Girl hostage, and the two realize that it's an evil spirit and that Headband Guy has been bitten. Out of nowhere, Ghosty Psychic then comes in to save the day, using up the last of his powers and sacrificing his life to save theirs. Man, I'm upset he died. I like that guy. Dee then races to find Charlotte. Not realizing that it's already too late, Charlotte gets drained of blood by the Countess herself, setting off a host of terrifying events. Dee then runs into even more trouble. He realizes that Carmilla's corpse is coming back to life. The blood flowing from Charlotte's half-dead body begins pouring into the coffin. Carmilla's spirit then reveals to Dee her desire for the vampires to run the world once again, using Charlotte's blood to reawaken herself even further and allow her to wreak havoc on the world world once again. She tries to break Dee's will into making him a full-on vampire monster, but he manages to break the spell and slow her down, shocking her to the bone and revealing a terrifying clue of Dee's past. Meyer finally shows up regenerated and good as new, and steals Charlotte away from Carmilla's grasp, allowing Dee to finally kill Carmilla once and for all, using his wrinkled face of a left hand to suck her spirit into the void. Late to the party as usual, blonde-haired lady finally arrives into the room and tries to finish Meyer off, but she's such a romantic 
romantic, she chokes at the last minute, feeling sad for their broken love. Dee, however, does not care and picks up the slack and tells Meyer that he must take back Charlotte's still useful corpse back to her family to get his bounty, and that he must kill Meyer right here and now. Meyer attacks Dee and the two duke it out, using their wits to brutally tear each other apart. The match is dead even until blonde hair girl finally has enough of this manly, manly bro shit and removes Charlotte's ring from her finger, telling the two to stop fighting and throws the ring to Dee, which is really great because Dee almost totally killed Meyer, barely missing his heart. He picks up the ring and tells Meyer that the ring will do and that he will take the ring back to Charlotte's family, allowing him to complete his bounty mission and get the money. With Carmilla dead, the castle begins to collapse all around them. The two lovebirds, I mean, now one lovebird, then enters the old rocket ship. Dee and blonde haired lady escape the castle and watch them take off into the stars. They had a scare for a second, they weren't sure if it really was gonna take off, but it turned out just fine. Blonde haired girl then tries to act cool and tells Dee that she'll let him have this bounty this time. She says she'll let him have the bounty on the condition that if he gives her a ride to the closest town, he can have it. Sometime later, a crowd of people gather around the funeral of someone very special, and this little girl sees a strange man in the distance. Ignoring the advice of stranger danger, she runs up to him. She asks if he's the vampire hunter that her now dead grandmother told her about, and Dee nods his head yes, saying that he's here to keep a promise to an old friend to deliver her flowers. And he heads off into the distance to handle more badass blade-esque missions in the future. But what did you think about the video? Let us know what you like about it, what you didn't like about it, and also don't forget to like and subscribe.